Can couples recover after infidelity? We get this question asked a lot, and it seems to be a triggering topic because unfortunately, in uh, the world we live in, this we found happens a lot in relationships. And it is very tender, and most people don't ever want to even share that there was an infidelity or some people go the other way where they put it all out on Facebook, every detail, and then sometimes they make up and now you just made your partner look like the biggest one. We see this issue happen so much in relationships that we wanted to get transparent and confront the situation and the issue and talk about it. So can couples recover? If they can, how do they recover and start to rebuild that trust? And so David and Yvette Yuloa here, we've been teaching relationships and communication and leadership for many years. To the grace of God, we've been very blessed to be able to help and save marriages across the globe. And so it's been a passion of ours. And when this topic comes up, it's very triggering. And it just reminds me of a couple that came to us many years ago where they were extremely angry at each other. They were very hurt. There was talks of divorce. They were already contacting and looking for a divorce attorney. And they found out about Yvette and I and our Warriors and Queens movement and they decided, you know what, if anything, let's just go and, and see if there's anything there for us because we're already at the end of our relationship. What else do we have to lose. And so they came to our live event many years ago and they were so angry and bitter at each other. They didn't even want to sit next to each other. And as they sat at the event in different seats, they started learning some of the frameworks that we teach in our Warriors and Queens. And what they realized was one of the reasons why an affair happens. And by the way, we truly believe, just like in any partnership, that it's a two-way street. Somebody can easily go into judgment, rightfully so, of the person that committed the affair. But at the same time, we got to look at what the cause was. Because when there's two partners in a relationship, both parties play a role. And if all you did was focus on one partner and you didn't really understand the cause of what caused this person, good or bad, you and I may not like it, but what caused this person to go and have an affair and break that covenant bond of their relationship with somebody else. Yes, and uh, so powerful to know that when they come to Warriors and Queens and they're watching the information and we break it down in a way that it's understandable and in a way that it's not pointing the fingers because a lot of people, they go to therapy and all it is about pointing the fingers and pointing the fingers. We always tell people when you're pointing the fingers, there's always a finger pointing at yourself. And at Warriors and Queens, we clean up our side of the street before we can do any co-creations as partners. And this couple realized that their polarity was completely flipped. What does that mean? She had become the man in the relationship and she was resenting him for it. And he had become the woman in the relationship and he was definitely resenting her for it. She was making all the decisions, feeling overwhelmed. He was feeling irritated and angry, and he didn't know why until we broke down what was going. And a lot of people that come to Warriors and Queens, they always say, wow, I've been putting together this puzzle without a picture. And sometimes people come here with a broken puzzle. And that was this couple. Their needs were not being met. They loved each other, but they had so much resentment and tension. Plus, he was going through what we call the tunnel, a midlife crisis. And if you haven't watched episode three, stop this, go back and watch it. Because when men are in the tunnel, they go through a certain process that's sacred and also very difficult where the partner is going through a, through a crisis herself what they learn and what changed. Yeah. So at the Warriors and Queen show, our goal is always to give you some value, some information, some takeaways so that you can have a better relationship. We like to call them unshakable relationships. And so 
when this couple started coming, there was a lot of light bulbs that were going on. Oh my gosh, I didn't understand what polarity meant. What is polarity and how did we flip polarity? In polarity, it basically means the opposites attract. And we have a feminine side of us and we have a masculine side of us. Most men are masculine at the core. Most women are feminine at their core. And what starts to happen in relationships, many times they start to flip their polarity for a lot of different reasons. And this gentleman was in his mid forties. And so when he was going through the tunnel, it's a place where men start to question everything. They start to get into this dark place where it causes a lot of chaos and they start doing things and thinking things that maybe they weren't before. So they start to change right before their partner's eyes. And then a partner starts to try to figure out and starts to control what's going on because a lot of times it creates chaos in the relationship. And so when the polarity starts to get flipped, what women tend to do is they tend to what we call frog farm. And what men tend to do is we tend to coal mine. So for this purpose, what started happening in their relationship, she unknowingly, uh, but unfortunately, we do live in a world today where this is the programming that most people grow up with, is she was constantly emasculating him. And when she would emasculate him, that basically means losing his ability or preventing him from producing results, diminishing his ability to produce results. And every time that happens to a man, it's like a piece of our soul starts to wither away. And so before we go any further, let's go into talking about what are some ways that women emasculate men, but also women emasculate other women. Because when you do this over a period of time, eventually your partner just doesn't feel like they can win. And what starts to happen is they start to look for places where they can win in life, where they can make other people happy or other things happy. And a lot of times this could eventually lead to an affair. So what is frog farming? It is the art of turning a perfectly great man into a frog. So you become a professional frog farmer. And guess what? It's all over the media. Our teachers are frog farmers. We live in a society where there is so much frog farming, at least in the USA. And so some of the ways women frog farm, and again, nobody taught us this. This is just a way to survive and to do life. So giving somebody the silent treatment. And by the way, we're going to go deep into this topic on another podcast because it does deserve the whole time on just frog farming and coal mining that Dave talked about. So another way that we frog farm is to correct or interrupt or just diminish, roll our eyes. Ladies, how many of us nag at our husbands? Nagging, nagging, frog, frog, right? The more you nag, the more you turn them into a frog, questioning them, complaining, criticizing, cutting off is a big one. And again, we do it subconsciously. I know when I was younger, I frog farmed my brothers. I frog farmed my dad. And after learning this work, I was like, wow, why don't they want to spend time with me? Because every time I saw them, I was doing one of these things. Some of the other ways, it's just, you know what? I'll just take it over. No, never mind. Taking it over, comparing and for unfavorably to other men, withhold appreciation, boss around. He's our husband. He's not our employee or our child. So anytime we do those things, we slowly diminish their power and their ability to feel that they can provide for us. And it definitely diminishes their desire for us. And it does not serve them in any way, shape, or form. And this doesn't happen overnight. This usually happens in a relationship that a couple have been together. It's boiling a frog since we're talking about frogs, mm -hmm. right? If, if you put a frog in boiling hot water, it's immediately going to jump out of it. But if you put a frog in room temperature water and you lightly heat it up, eventually the frog boils. In a relationship, it doesn't happen overnight. It's little things that start to build up. And again, both partners play a role. So while she was frog farming and not meeting his needs, he was on the other side doing something similar where he wasn't meeting her needs. He was the pleaser and he didn't want to make any decisions. And by the way, for men that are in the tunnel, this is usually a good sign. They start to question everything. They don't want to make any decisions and they don't want to be committed to anything. And so he lacked effort. 
in making her feel seen, making her feel safe, making her feel heard. And he prioritized a whole bunch of other stuff, including work and business and hobby, because that's what was giving him energy. And so while he was being the pleaser and not necessarily helping her to feel important to him in the relationship, little by little, they started to move apart. And when you move apart, all of a sudden, it's interesting how the enemy, and believe it or not, there is an enemy out there, and the devil is out there looking for opportunities to plant temptation in your heart, to plant temptation in your mind. And, and if you don't know how to resist, and if you don't really learn how to communicate with your partner, and you leave things in the world of the unsaid, little by little, proximity starts to kick in. And now instead of giving the energy and the love and his cherished devotion to his queen, started finding other avenues to give that. And so the three stages that men and women go through right before an affair happens is this. Yeah. And ladies, listen to this part. Even if you have not experienced an affair in your relationship, this is so important because as we frog farm and emasculate unknowingly so, and we diminish and we diminish and we diminish, they go through three stages. The first stage men go through is trying to make her happy. Like they will do anything. A key word here is happy. They will worship the ground that you walk on, trying to make you happy. And when they realize they're not good enough for that because of the emasculation, they move to the second stage. And the second stage is trying not to make you mad. So they go from trying to make you happy. Okay, if I can't do that, then I'm going to go, I'm going to try not to make her mad. This is where they start walking on eggshells. They second guess their leadership. They second guess their decisions. Plus you're out there just chopping and chopping, diminishing. Most men are not getting enough appreciation, which is oxygen to their soul. And guess what? They go to stage three, which is planning their escape. At this point, they will have an affair or they will have an affair with their job because they don't want to come home or they will pay more attention to the dog than they put, will pay attention to you. It's, oh my God, the dog is so cute. You are adorable. Hi, babe. That kind of energy. One of the biggest complaints with women that come to our academy and they're like, I want my husband to treat me like he treats the dog. I want that kind of attention that he used to give me but doesn't. Right. And so after they came to our weekend and we started coaching with them and giving them some simple things on how to communicate with each other, they started implementing it. And we had a private coaching session with them. And one of the challenges was she didn't know if she could trust him again. She didn't know if she could forgive him again. And so the key into rebuilding a relationship that there is an affair is number one, to understand that both partners played a role. She started to realize that, wow, I was emasculating him. And he would start to realize, wow, I wasn't cherishing her. I wasn't giving her my full devotion. By the way, when men were designed for three things, to provide, to protect, and to procreate. Our whole world is designed to be your hero. And if we can't feel or be your hero because of all the emasculation that goes on, then we start to die inside. And so relationships, they realize it's not a tug of war. You're not both on the opposite team trying to be the enemy of the other person. And that's where a lot of relationships, they miss it. They think that it's got to be a win-lose situation. And we shared with them, you got to, in order to have this loving relationship that you want, number one, you got to understand you're on the same team. And when you're on the same team, we are believers and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forgave us for our sins by paying the ultimate price where God, our father sent his only son so that, and died on a cross to forgive us for our sins. And so that's our way to heaven. So if he paid the ultimate price, who are we to hold on to unforgiveness, to hold on to bitterness and to anger when we were forgiven for our sins and the ultimate price was paid. So the reason I bring that up is in order to move forward, both partners have to forgive each other. 
There's no way of rebuilding a future if you're looking in the rear view mirror. If you're constantly reminding each other of what happened in the past to bring each other pain, to bring each other sadness and doubt and limitation. So forgiveness of both partners. And so we took them through an exercise to forgive each other, not just in their mind, but in their heart and in their soul, because from that forgiveness is where you can start to rebuild that trust. Yeah, and we teach something called covenant conversations, which is one of the most sacred processes because sometimes we need to release all that stuff that's been back there, right? Because we sometimes we create an invisible PowerPoint, ladies, of all the things that bother us that sometimes we don't get out. It's, we took them through this process of learning to communicate without blame, without pointing the fingers, that they could release what was holding them back, but also look at each other eye to eye because they loved each other. And they didn't want to go through a death in the family, which is what a divorce does. It's like a death in the family for the kids, for the income, for finances. And so as they went through that and they truly looked into each other's eyes and they started to remember who they were and who they are and how much they love each other. And also that affairs are a two-way street. A lot of times they're pointing the finger and blame but there is something the other partner did that did not participate in the affair or did not have an affair. There's also things that the partner did that created that dynamic in the relationship. And most of the time, it's a blind spot. There are things that we do to push our partners away. A lot of them are subconscious. And so learning that there was a two-way street and how their needs were not being met and now how they could be met. We also helped them shatter their masks that were holding them hostage. If you haven't listened to that episode, we got things from our childhood that hold us back where we still make decisions from that little wounded child. And if you don't heal those masks, guess what? You're letting that six-year-old boy that's protecting himself make all the decisions in your adult life unless you go back and you heal those. They also didn't want to have to wait years and years for this transformation. They wanted full on immersion because they also knew that going through a divorce was going to be chaos for their finances, splitting the wealth in half and spending most money on attorneys. And then all the damage to their three beautiful children and the emotional uh, scars and then the friendship splitting up. And so they actually decided uh, we want to fix this now. We want to fix it fast. So they joined our mastermind. We call it Unshakable Love Mastery, where we take couples through a full-on immersion, eight months to transform your relationship to get you to where you want to be. And from that, as they shattered their mask and they realized how to meet each other's needs at the highest level, which is, by the way, the next episode, we're going to teach what is the true cause of affairs, what two needs are not being met, and more importantly, how can you meet those needs so that nobody ever decides to have an affair ever again in your relationship? And so after uh, our Unshakable Love Mastery, they actually, uh, today we're pretty excited to say that they are still together, super happy. They have an incredible loving relationship. And it's so cool because they constantly come and tell us, they, people think that they're newlyweds because of how much they love each other. And they will tell you themselves, there's no way they could have thought that they could have an even better relationship than they had before this chaos. But because the chaos, it brought so much more depth. It brought so much more love. It brought so much more partnership and passion to them that now they are a massive inspiration for other couples that may think that, oh, it's over, it's done. We can't, we can't save our marriage because of what's happened. They are true testament to what's possible. And so now they're a huge example to their kids on what's possible. The healing that has happened in that family is nothing short of miraculous. They've made it their mission to share the work of warriors and queens and the communication that is so missing because nobody ever taught us to communicate well in a relationship that's not something we learn in school or anywhere and so being able to do this and watching their life has been such a gift to us and we are in awe of the transformations that is possible 
As a matter of fact, as we end, we would like to gift you our e-course. And our e-course has tremendous value. We talk about the masks, the triggers. We give you a downloadable PDF. And as a gift to you for listening and watching our podcast today, we want to gift it to you. So if you go to warriorsandqueens.com forward slash three, the number three steps, we're going to show you three short steps to mastery in your relationship. The link is in the comments. We hope you download it in the next 48 hours and you take that first step towards having an extraordinary relationship. And remember at Warriors and Queens, we empower people to have dream relationships and it starts with one person at a That's time. Awesome. Love you guys. Hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks so much for joining Yvette and I. Our goal is to give you tools, mindset, and motivation to strengthen your most important relationship and experience vibrant intimacy. Please take a moment to rate and review us. We would love to gift you our e-course at warriorsandqueens.com forward slash three steps. 